Connecting apps to Make is extremely easy to do most of the time. Unfortunately, connecting a personal Gmail account is a bit more complicated. To make sure you can automate your Gmail inbox with Make, we've put together this quick tutorial to show you how to create a connection for a personal Gmail account. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use low-code tools like Make to help individuals and enterprises to automate the apps they use every day. If you'd like to see more automation tips and tutorials every week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And turn on those notifications too, so you don't miss a thing. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a project in Google Cloud that you can use to authorize and connect your personal Gmail account to Make, formerly known as Integromat. Then I'll show you how to add the connection to Make and test it out with an automated scenario. Let's get started. First, I want to emphasize that this tutorial is only for connecting a personal Gmail account to Make. If the Gmail account you want to use is already part of an organization, then these steps just won't be applicable. You can just connect your company account the same way you would connect any other account to Make. With that out of the way, let's start creating a Make connection for a personal Gmail account. To begin, Go to console.developers.google.com and sign in with the Google account that you want to use in Make. You can also find that URL in the resources board linked in the description down below. Even though we're going into the Google Developers site, you don't have to write any code to set up this integration. You'll also only have to do this once for each personal Gmail account that you want to connect. You won't need to revisit this cloud project every time you want to build a new automation for your inbox. If you've never used the Google Cloud Console before, you'll have to agree to the terms of use. Then, create a new project. If you already have one or more projects, you can click on the selector here to create a new one. Otherwise, you should see this button that says Create a New Project. Give your project a name and click Create. Then, just wait a moment for Google to finish actually creating your project. If you're a no-code builder without any programming experience, this might seem a little intimidating, but don't worry, it's actually pretty simple to put together. We're essentially going to be creating a project that just authorizes Make to access our Gmail account. We won't publish the project, and instead, we'll only grant access to test users. And the only test user, in this case, will be our own email address. With the project created, we now need to enable the API that we want to use. APIs, or Application Programming Interfaces, are how modern web apps communicate with each other and execute actions in each other's software. Make is going to use Gmail's API to watch the inbox, send emails, and do whatever else you want to automate. To enable the Gmail API, click on Enable APIs and Services. Then, search for Gmail here in this search bar in the middle of the page. You should get two results, Gmail API and Gmail Postmaster Tools API. Choose the first one, Gmail API, then click on Enable. Next, you'll need to create an authorization screen that will let you access this project from Make. Click on OAuth Consent Screen to create this portal. Then, you'll need to specify the user type as internal or external. Internal would allow other users in your organization to access this project, but since we're building an integration for a personal Gmail account, that doesn't really apply. Instead, choose External, then click Create. Next, you're going to need to provide some basic information about the application. Provide a name for the application that's asking to access your Gmail account. You can just enter Make or Make Gmail integration here. Then you'll need to provide a user support email. Nobody will be able to use this integration except for the people you personally authorize as test users later on in this process, so don't worry. Nobody will be seeing this and emailing you directly. You can just pick your Gmail address from the drop down here. Next, you can upload an app logo, but there's really no need to do that. You can just skip it. You can also skip adding any app domain info. If you were building an integration for public use for your own application, providing these links and resources would help users to learn more about your application and its policies. However, since we're just making a private integration to use Gmail with Make, formerly known as Integromat, you don't need to add anything here. However, you will need to add the actual domains that will be allowed to use the Gmail API through your account. You'll need to add two domains here make.com and integramat.com. As you may be aware, make used to be known as integramat until a somewhat recent and syntactically inconvenient rebrand. 
The old name is still sometimes used on the back end, so it's important to include both domains here. Once both domains are entered, you need to provide the developer contact information. Google will send any relevant updates about your project to the email you enter here. In most cases, you could just enter your Gmail address in this field, then click Save and Continue. Next, you'll be taken to the Scopes screen. Here, you can determine what the integration will be allowed to do with your Gmail API. This is where you can explicitly allow it to access certain methods or actions. Click on Add or Remove Scopes, then click on the filter and search for Gmail and select Gmail API. This will limit the results to methods from the Gmail API, which is all we're concerned with today. According to Make, you'll need to allow the following scopes, mail.google.com, modify, compose, read only, metadata, insert, send, labels. These are the minimum requirements for integrating your personal Gmail account with Make. Some specific actions may require additional scopes. Select each of the required scopes, then click Update to save your selection. Google will automatically sort the scopes into sensitive, non-sensitive, and restricted. You can review the scopes to ensure everything was properly added, then click Save and Continue. Next, you'll be prompted to create test users. As Google notes here, these are the users who will be able to access your project while it's still in test mode. Ultimately, this project is going to stay in test mode. You won't be publishing it, so anyone who needs access will need to be listed here. The bottom line, you should only need to provide your personal Gmail account that you want to use in Make. So add that email address and click Save and Continue. Next, you'll see a summary of all your choices and settings. There's nothing we need to do here. Instead, just click on Credentials, then Create Credentials and select OAuth Client ID. This will let you create an ID and secret that you'll need in Make. Don't worry, we're almost done. For the application type, choose Web Application. Then give the app a name. As Google notes, this won't be seen on the front end, so you can enter anything you'd like here. You don't need to provide any authorized JavaScript origins either, but you will need to add an authorized redirect URI. This URI on your screen is what you'll need to enter to authorize Make. Note that as we said earlier, they're still using the Integromat domain. You can also find this URI in the resources board linked in the description down below for a quick copy and paste. With the URI in place, click on Create to finish generating these credentials. This pop-up will display the client ID and the client secret that you'll need to enter later in Make, so copy those to your clipboard. If you need to find this information later, just sign into your Google Cloud Console, access your project, and click on Credentials, then OAuth 2.0. Your Google project is now all set. Next, we'll be establishing the Gmail connection in Make. To add your personal Gmail connection to Make, you'll need to create a new scenario and add a Gmail module to it. So let's create a new scenario and add a trigger module, search for Gmail as the app, and choose Watch Emails as the event. Next, you'll need to add a connection. Give your connection a name, but do not click on Sign in with Google quite yet. First, you'll need to toggle Show Advanced Settings on. You'll see two fields where you can enter your client ID and client secret. If you haven't already, copy those from your Google Cloud project. Then paste the ID and secret into the appropriate fields. Now you can click Sign in with Google and log in with the same Gmail account that you set up with Google Cloud. You'll see this warning pop up, but you can just click on Continue. Then check the box here to allow Make or Integromat to read, compose, send, and delete mail on your behalf. Click Continue again, and you'll be all set. Your connection will now be added to your Make account. But just to be sure that everything is working as intended, it's best to give your new Gmail connection a quick test. First, finish setting up this Watch Emails trigger to verify that Make can actually retrieve emails from your inbox. You can configure the settings however you'd like. I'll keep it simple. I'll just have it watch my inbox for all emails. Once the module is set up, give it a test. Right click on it, select choose where to start, choose the first email, and click on the run once button.
The module should run and retrieve an email. As usual, you can click on the number above the module to see the details about the information that it processed. So we know that it can read emails with our Gmail connection. Now let's make sure that it can send them too. Add another Gmail module to your scenario and choose send an email. In the to field, enter any email address that you have access to. Then compose any message that you'd like. I'll just send an email that says, there's a new message in the tutorials inbox and throw in some of the data retrieved in the trigger. Once you've finished writing your email, click OK. Then test the whole scenario. Everything looks good in make. I'll just check my inbox and confirm that I actually received the message. And there it is. With this connection, we can read and send emails from a personal Gmail account. If this whole setup was a little too complicated for you, you could use your personal Gmail account on Zapier without needing to set up a Google Cloud project. Keep in mind, with simplicity comes cost, and Zapier will be more expensive in the long run. In most cases, connecting apps to Make just takes a few clicks. However, when you want to use a personal Gmail account, things get oddly complicated. But by following the steps we've shown you here, you should be able to start automating your Gmail inbox with Make in no time. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the resources board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation, and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.